There is perhaps no other human who has shown more vulnerability and eloquence and sounded a greater clarion call for justice in the wake of the brutal and deadly attack on January 6th on the U.S. Capitol than someone who's become our dear friend, Officer Harry Dunn. In his new book, which is out today, you can buy it right now, he explains why he has taken this role, why he decided to be so vocal about the need for accountability after the insurrection. He writes this, quote, I speak out not because I want something for me, but because I want accountability. I want people responsible for that day, including Trump and anybody else who conspired to breach the Capitol and try to halt our democracy to pay a price, just like we paid a price. And I want us to never repeat a day like that. It is a stain on our nation. Officer Dunn has also started a vitally important conversation about the trauma he's endured that day and every day since as he continues to struggle. He says this, quote, I'm still struggling, still trying to get back to the man I was. I'm a lot better, but I came to realize that recovering from that day is going to be a long process. The hard part is accepting that I will probably never fully heal. Joining us at the table is our dear friend, Officer Harry Dunn, author of the new book, Standing My Ground, a Capitol Police Officer's Fight for Accountability and Good Trouble After January 6th. I'm so happy that this is out. Me too. <laughs> um, and I'm so happy for you. I, I want to I get into, you know, all the good stuff that I always like to talk about with you. But I, I want to start with today's news. I mean, news of, of immunity for Mark Meadows. And I'm not a lawyer, but I, I imagine he had something good that Jack Smith thought was good enough to give him some sort of cover and immunity from prosecution if he helped with the prosecution of Donald Trump. What do you think of that? You just had all your great... <laughs> yeah, I know, I was before. taking notes. <laughs> so those are the individuals that I kind of defer to when it comes to that type of news. Yeah. However, um, I like people seeing held accountable for their actions. And there were clearly um, actions that the former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, took yeah. uh, that were criminal. Um, I mean, obviously, the, in the grand scheme of things, you know, you want the entire case that's brought forth against Donald Trump and all the other co-conspirators. You want that a, a successful guilty verdict. And if that's what it takes to get it, I, I don't know if it's the best way, but... Uh, I defer to the legal minds. No, me too. I mean, I just said that. You know, you've got all yeah. these sorry saps, and I, I don't feel bad for them, but you've got all the insurrectionists. Um, yeah. Many have been sentenced, some to, to two decades. And, and it looks like if there's been immunity um, offered to Mark Meadows, as ABC News is reporting, yeah. likely no jail time for him. But it's like you said, the foot soldiers, like, mm -hmm. they're the ones that are getting slapped and... Mm -hmm. The hit it, it doesn't seem right. It right. doesn't seem right or just seem fair. Like I said, I don't know yeah. enough about what he can and cannot offer. And I trust that the um, the Justice Department is doing what they think is best to get justice for the American people. Yeah, my non-legal um, analysis is it better be good. <laughs> <laughs> It better be good. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the book. So yeah. I, 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 I've had the privilege of, of, you know, you're always the first person we want to talk to whenever anything on this front happens. Yeah. Um, but I didn't know about, about the role of your daughter. Talk about that. You know, it's, well, first of all, she, <laughs> she humbles me in a way, you know. I, Kids do that. They do. Like I, even just now, right before we sent on, she said, hey, daddy. I was like, I'm getting ready to go on. You know, turn the TV on. Oh, cool. <laughs> you know, she, she, she could care less. But, um, but on that day, um, the story that, one of the stories I tell about her is um, she was FaceTiming me as I was trying to find my phone to text my loved ones and tell everybody was okay. And I, uh, I wiped the pepper spray, excuse me, I was wiping my eyes um, because I was crying and I didn't want her to see me all disheveled and I'm like, daddy's okay. So I wiped my eyes with my coat jacket and it had remnants of pepper spray on it and I smeared it further into my eyes. Mm -hmm. And even in the middle of an insurrection, you have to show up for your kid. Totally. Yeah, and um, I, I kept thinking to make it home to my daughter that day, so. You also write about um, something else that we that's never come up, that for the first time ever, ever, you're given helmets, why? I don't know. That's the question. Like, you know, I, I made it clear that I'm not saying that this is some conspiracy. Right. Or no, like no. That, but it's an unknown question that I guess it hasn't been answered yet. Like, was it, did they know ahead that this was going to be bad? Um, 
people suffered a lot that day. And I think it would be fair for everybody to just get answers about everything, the totality of what happened that day, not just on, you know, at the White House and the planning before and everything, but the, the, the security failures and the, the leading up to the intel mm -hmm. failures and all that stuff. And I think all of that needs to have a big picture um, to show the failures of that day. So that way we can really be sure that it doesn't happen again. You, you write in the part that I read about the healing, and I, and I want to, and I feel like we always end up here, and I always have two hours worth of things <laughs> I want to ask you about this. But yeah. you read that you won't get back to the man you were before. I mean, we didn't know you before, yeah. and I wonder. And this is selfish, right? Like this is about us, not you. Yeah. Um, but you know, here we are. Welcome to 2023, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but is there any part of you that feels like you could get used to this version of yourself and this role? And, and I know that when you talk about trauma, literally everyone stops you, sticks your arm in like the, the elevator door and wants to tell you their story because you've opened a door for them. Yeah. Is there is there any part of that 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 you that you sit with and think like, well, maybe this was a, a different path, but also my purpose? Maybe um, I've always you know, like I said, I joined policing because I believed in the idea of public service and, you know, service to your country. My father is in the military and just an idea of something bigger than yourself. So I've always had the idea of public service and everything, but as far as getting back to that individual and embracing this new role, so to speak, we evolve as humans. And it, when you are faced with trauma, you don't just stay right where you are. If you do, you'll succumb to it, um, or you evolve and find a new purpose. And I realized that I help people out if it, just by being vulnerable, you know, like you said, just sticking your arm, people come and tell you their stories. Hey, you've inspired me and it makes it worth it. It's like a continuation of my public service, but in a different capacity. And I'm not.